Hi, this is Doug from Dynamic Computing, and welcome to episode 48 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. About a year ago, I did a video called the 15 kilohertz conundrum about the issues in getting our Amigas, our classic Amigas, to work with modern monitors that included uh, some external devices using some LCD displays that support 15 kilohertz. Today, I want to cover a new product. And this one actually works really nicely. This little beauty is an RGB to component device made by Francis Olivier Gradel from Retronic Designs. The goal here is to grab the RGB signals from the RGB 23 pin port on the Amiga and convert them over to component, also known as YPBPR, which is about the dumbest acronym ever created. Please be aware, this is not an upscaler, nor is it a deinterlacer. It's designed to take the 15 kilohertz video from the Amiga and translate it into 15 kilohertz video that goes out of component cables. But if you have a television that can handle the 240p display that this little guy outputs, you are in for a world of beauty. Now, most televisions, most modern televisions, deal with things like 480i, 480p at the bare minimum, and then go to 720, 1080, even 4K. These are all acronyms that we're relatively familiar with now. One that's not quite as popular nowadays is 240p video. Now this is the kind of video that was output by our video game consoles and computers back in the 80s and early 90s. All the Nintendos, all the Segas, all of those pushed out 240p but it didn't matter because they had composite outputs and our CRT TVs can handle that just fine without any issues. Now 240p is about 320 by 256 pixels. Sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? Sounds almost like our regular Amiga displays, which it is. The problem here is the component portion of some LCD televisions can't try translate 240p properly. It sees it either as a 480i signal or a 480p signal, which is a little higher resolution, and it gives you a black screen or it gives you corruption. But there are a lot of LCD TVs out there, and I will put a link right down here with a list of the common ones that will handle this image absolutely perfectly, and it's gonna knock your socks off. Now I've tested it on my Sony TV right here. I've tested it on my Sharp TV out in my living room. Absolutely perfect on both of them. I also tried it with my little tiny 19 inch LG television. Nothing, wouldn't handle the 240p, but that's okay. Now don't blame the Amiga or this device for the lack of the TVs handling 240p. This is a problem of the televisions and they can't display a component image from an old Nintendo or an old Sega or something like that if they could pump out the image in component. Now this is more than just a little guy that takes the RGB red, green, and blue signals and pumps them out new little ports in the top. It's got a little chip on here. This little chip here was actually designed for a 3DO, those old consoles from the uh, 90s, actually designed for the 3DO and Francis took it, modified it, and balanced it to work on an Amiga to send out the proper signals and do the proper signal translations. But now, let's see it in action. So I'm demonstrating this on my Amiga 1200. I've also tested it on my Amiga 500 and my Amiga 1000. It works equally well on all of my machines. You'll notice this has an actual 23 pin connector, not one of the chopped down 25 to 23 pins, which is kind of a nice touch. So what we do is we'll just plug this right into our RGB port right here. There we go. And then you take your component cable, which is going to be a red and a green and a blue cable. This one also happens to have my audio cables I've got connected and just plug them into the corresponding ports here. Red, blue, green. Then you're going to plug the opposite end of these cable into your component 
portion of the television. You're, if you have a component television, you're going to have these same three ports. Plug them in and then plug in your audio cables too. But for now, let's take a look at what this little guy can do. Now, switch over to your component input on your television. And in a moment, you'll have an incredibly crisp and vibrant image on your screen. Now note that many TVs, but not all, have a setting to display in 4x3 mode instead of 16x9. And most people will want to go that route. You see on my TV, the borders here are black where it converts it over into a 4x3 image. Now I'm here in a high resolution 720x480 display. And you'll notice that the flicker is almost non-existent. You'll see a little bit of flicker, but certainly not anything that's too distracting. And it's really just on the very fine lines. You can see a, a smidgen of it when you move a window around, but it's really not too bad. Now note, it is not the device that is doing the deinterlacing. It is the television doing the deinterlacing. Let's look at a program or two. Now you may recognize this one from uh, Amiga Bill from the Amiga Art Contest. Uh, that Pixel Vixen and I put on a few months ago. This one I've actually upscaled to a 1448 by 482 image, which is the highest standard resolution that works with 15 kilohertz. I thought it'd be a good example of what you can get out of an Amiga. This is pumping straight out of the Amiga into the component of the television. You can see the nice vibrant colors. This is a 16 color image, but you can see it comes through really nicely. Now this is one from good old Eric Schwartz here that he did for the contest. Look at these vibrant colors that this can put out. This is absolutely gorgeous quality images. Now let's take a look at a business application. This is going to be Turbo Calc at 1448 by 482. Again, just because we can, not because it would be particularly useful. I think you'll agree that's a pretty darn sharp image at 1448 by 482. We can get a lot of columns in there. Now, not too shabby really, but how is this going to play an Amiga game? Let's take a look. Now, this is the new updated 1.1 version of Black Dawn Rebirth that you heard about. This corrects most of the issues that I had with the game when I did my review two weeks ago. Let's take a look at how it fixes them. I think you'll agree that the screen looks pretty darn good for a component video. Now we've got 3D turned on and we have our smooth turning turned on, which was one of my complaints the other week. And look how nice that is when we turn now. No more graphics corruption when we turn. Really nice. And look what else he did. He put in more information on these terminals here. So now we actually have a story to go along with the game, which was my second complaint on here was the lack of a story fixed. Absolutely wonderful. Go buy this game. This went up a full point because of the fixes that he put in. So let's talk about really the only issue I have with the device, and it is not the fault of the device at all. I really wanted to use this to capture video from my, AV, my Amiga. Now I have a nice video capture board that has HDMI, has composite, and has component inputs. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna hook this up to the component inputs. I'm gonna capture all day long and everything's gonna be peaches and cream. Because I can use it to capture anything from my Commodore 64 or my VIC-20 through the composite port and it works great. So I hooked it up, got the same issue that I received on my LG TV. It just won't handle the 240p images. Now there is one out there that'll do it. I'm going to show a picture of it right here. It's called the StarTech and I did quite a bit of research and people are saying this guy will capture 240p images beautifully through the component cables. But it's 185 bucks and I suppose I'll just have to order one. I also have an issue with PAL working. Now my Amiga 1200 will go into PAL mode in a heartbeat. You know, you do the two finger salute, whatever, tell it to go to PAL. My Sony TV is not PAL compatible. Other TVs I have, they'll go into PAL mode just fine. They'll display PAL on this device fine. Some TVs occasionally will just be NTSC only. Take that into consideration. I also tried pumping it through my nice um, Marantz AV receiver. 
that has some component inputs and HDMI outputs thinking, okay, it will properly scale it and I'll be able to use my video capture on my HDMI. Well, the issue is it doesn't handle 240p either. It will work, it will get a signal. If I put my Amiga in interlace mode, like 640 by 400 interlace mode, then it sees it as a 480i image and it works fine. I go to play a game, black screen, that's life. Now here is something that actually works pretty cool. I've done a review on this board before. This is the GBS 8220. It will take a, a 15 kilohertz signal and it will upscale it to VGA resolutions and let you use it with a VGA monitor with mediocre quality at best, okay? I had created a custom cable that plugs in right here. It goes Amiga RGB 23 pin and then pumps it out the VGA. It works, but the images are washed out. I thought, hey, this little guy has the component input. Let's try it with that. So here's what I got. Back to Eric for a second. I've got a switch that allows me to switch the inputs of my component devices. Now I've switched it over to the GBS 8220, which is now displaying on this VGA monitor. And I think you can see the quality is really not bad. I mean, it does a pretty darn good job. A much better job than the GBS 8220 with my proprietary RGB cable. And I think that it does this because Francis's board has special chips on there that handle the color even better. Now, the other perk with going this route, going to component cables to the GBS 8220, not only do you get a rock solid non-interlaced display with pretty darn good colors for about an extra 20 bucks for the board, but it also works perfectly well in PAL mode, like the del deluxe Pac-Man right here, comes up perfectly in PAL mode. Yippee, I love this game, except I am really not very good at it when I'm trying to film a video and play the game at the same time. So I just talked to Francis about 15 minutes before sitting down and shooting this video. He sent me a message on Facebook and he says, Doug, I just built 10 more units. I found out a small issue with the pixel clock coming out of the DB23 video port. It interferes with the video signal. It has to be filtered out. I added a 1UF between pin 16 and 15 underneath the board and it solved the problem. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't know how much better this image quality can get, but Francis says it's even 10 to 15% better than the version I have, which he hasn't shipped to anybody, by the way. So all the new versions he's going to ship out when you guys order them are going to have this fix and the quality is going to be 10 to 15% better than what I've already shown you today. Not bad. So what's the final verdict? Go into this with your eyes open. Understand it's not going to work with every television on the planet. Look in my description at the televisions it will work with and make sure that you have something that it's going to work with. Understand it is not a deinterlacer and flicker fixer, okay? And you're going to have to except the fact that it's still going to be 15 kilohertz. It's fine as long as you have a television that can handle it. Understand it is not perfect for video capture unless you have a device that can capture it 240p component. If you do, you're going to get the best images that you can possibly imagine. If you don't, if yours requires a 31 kilohertz frequency or will only record 480i or 480p, you're going to have to do something about that, get an upscaler or something. Now I do wish for the $49.95 price tag that it would come with a 3D printed, just a little enclosure, just throw something around it to give it some protection for 50 bucks. Do I think it's a good value for 50 bucks? Well, its competitor that I use all the time is a SCART cable. It's RGB to SCART and then a SCART to HDMI box. Once you add in the cable, which is 18 bucks, and the SCART to HDMI, HDMI box, which is 30 bucks, and a little six foot HDMI cable, which is five bucks, you're talking 50 or $60 for the next 
closest solution. And to be honest, I'm more impressed with the color renditions of this than I am over the SCART to HDMI solution. So I think it's a good value considering what it can do and the effort he's put into this. Now I'm going to give this four and a quarter check marks out of five without any hesitation at all. This absolutely, this absolutely deserves it. It would get 4.75 check marks if it came with a little, you know, 3D printed case to enclose it to make it feel a little more comfy and safe and warm in there. But whatever, it works just fine. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, share this video with your friends, and follow me on Twitter at 10mark1. But as Mike Tyson would say, this is Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retro Cath signing out. Sorry, Mike, don't punch me. <laughs>